Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Good evening, I suppose. So welcome to the Monday, December 5th meeting of the Conway Select Board. Um, call the meeting to order. And I am Philip Cantor. Next to me is Erica Goldman. And next to him, her, of course, is Chris. And uh, yeah, first item on the agenda, vote to approve the minutes of November 21st. Um, they looked good to me. I make a motion to accept. Uh, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, um, we have three warrants the accounts payable warrant in the amount of $69,367.54, the payroll warrant in the amount of $135,757.09. And the payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $33,232.97. Um, meetings attended by select board members. Chris? Uh, none here. Erica? None for me. Um, I just had, I went up to uh, Ashfield to meet with all the Ashfield folks about <laughs> Yeah, about the dam and about all the related dam yeah, things. Right. Um, <laughs> got a dam tour, got a dam tour of the dam. <laughs> it was, it was, uh, yeah. But and actually, I felt better after getting the going through the dam because uh, they actually the work that they did addressed a lot of my long term complaint without realizing it, but they. The, the it, it was in bad shape. It was really needed that work. So I do feel better about that. We agreed on some things we do. Like automated alarm, alarm system, a grant for that. And so, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and no, Jen came without the, oh, yeah. came without that special jar of treats. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a motion that we approve the warrants. Um, because I Chris just reminded me that we didn't do that yet. Oh yeah, good job, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Um, public comment. Is that where we ask of Jim? Does he wish to make a public comment? Perhaps not. We'll take that as a no, Jim. Um, new business. Um, I so Je Je Jess, Jess in the not anticipated we need No, actually, it's actually here. It's on the real It's website. on the one on the website. Sorry, we're still having a little bit of a <laughs> so it's a transition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I thought that I well, so the, the one you see there is it's not on the agenda that's printed out for you, but it is on the website right now live that Adam's working. So um, okay. So what's the where where is Jeff on the agenda then? Since I can't see business, it, since right? I can't see it with the last one. Yeah, but so I mean, we can it. move it up if you like. Yes. Jeff is here. <laughs> Yes. Um, <laughs> um, so okay. So what what is what is the what does it say on the agenda that I can't see? Uh, go to appoint Jeff Vermont as a new transfer station manager. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll 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 move him up on the agenda that I can't see to say. Sorry. <laughs> he saw it. I can't find it now, but. <laughs> Uh, Jack, you want to uh, come on up in, uh, in the camera so that the camera can catch you when you talk? Because <laughs> the residents are so curious. Get some, get some yeah, actually, <laughs> probably that would have been a good idea. We got to drop in. So, you want to tell us about? Sure. Tell us about, and then we'll. Sure. So, yes. Yeah, so last week, the, um, the interview committee got together and conducted three interviews. 
Um, after which, the committee we voted to recommend that we hire Jeff for this position. I would like to say, um, Jeff has pretty much been doing this all along to a large extent on his own and under his own initiative. Um, his work has been wonderful, and I personally highly recommend him for this position. Thank and, you, Jeff. And, and, <laughs> and this is something you're willing to do and you want to do. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's my <laughs> hobby now. <laughs> <laughs> Just working through some health issues, and yeah. I'll be back. Yep, I'm all right. So. So the way it will work is there is a normal shift is roughly 25, 26 hours. So this position will be at $17 an hour and will be an extra six hours over the pay period. So it'll be up to 32 hours over the two week period. And so part of those will be worked on the off week just to make sure that you know everything's going smoothly and touching with the other crew. So just how this in the contract. Correct, correct. So he will be communicating, Jan and, and Amy will know just to go straight to Jeff and then, you know, Jeff and I will be communicating. So, but the day-to-day -day management will really be through Jeff. And Amy. You already talked to Amy today. So. Okay. <laughs> right. And I mean, the only, my only thing about, so that the way that we've set this up did not involve a town meeting vote yet. Yeah. So presumably in June. Yeah, you told me that. Yeah, the town meeting will have a vote. And they may or may, you know, there's a potential that somebody will stand up and say, yeah. not don't fund this. But um, okay. I don't see that as likely, but it's there's always a potential. Okay. So, that's, that's I understand that. Okay. Other than that, um, Welcome, and I'd like to make a motion to appoint Jeff as our new uh, first, the, the first, the very first transfer station manager. Is that the title? Is that the official title? Transfer station manager. TFM. TFM. Nazi. Well, I'll second that. TSM. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Welcome. You're officially. Welcome and thank you. you. You're official. Big target on my back. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. I'll let you back to your best. You get, you get to. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, you too. Was there any other items on the agenda that I can't see that no, I, besides the one that I can't see? <laughs> so we're just okay. I, I was I was not hundred percent okay. sure I had put it on there, but I forgot to stick it on here, which is why it was my fault that it's not on the one in front of you. Okay. Basically, we're still also if, if we can figure out how to print it off of that, we could print that draft. Oh, you know. I know how to do print screen on a computer. Well, print screen, yeah, but. But then you'd have like four pages. Yeah. So we got to figure out how to download it. But at least it was on the official. <laughs> All right. So other items, new business. Vote to appoint Teresa Carter to the Cultural Council for a term ending June 30th. Does anybody know anything about this appointment? Just that it was brought to me by the by the council by the chair. Who is the chair? Oh, uh, Michelle. Anybody know her? Does she live in Conway? <laughs> well, I'm I'm just always happy to you know yeah, anyone who's really yeah, yeah, yeah. on anyone on our board. Yeah, boards, I so. mean. Yeah, I don't personally know her, I don't like her, but. I mean, I would, I would approve her with the pro providing that she is in fact an actual Conway resident and otherwise complies with all bylaws regarding appointments. <laughs> um, but 
especially the resident thing, since I don't, I'm, I don't I'm know. Sure, her. Yeah, I will. Okay, I have a double check, but I cannot imagine you're going to put her forward. Yeah, have we ever had someone nominated for committee? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Really? <laughs> Um, I did ask how many members they have on the committee uh, on the council, and Michelle told me it was up to eight at one point. So I couldn't find any background on yeah, that sounds... some of the committees and councils. It's kind of hard to find the history of these when they were, you know, to know how many seats and that kind of thing. So yeah, the mystery is one person making stuff <laughs> sometimes, but um, yeah. Uh, so, all right. So, motion to approve Teresa Carter to the Cultural Council for a term ending June 30th, 25. Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Make sure she's good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next one is vote to appoint Susan Fenton to the Conway Currents New Letter Committee for a term ending June 30th, 25. And Mike Haley as an associate member of brand new category of membership to the <laughs> yeah, what, what Conway Currents newsletter. What's well, that? It's, it's a non voting, so it's basically okay. he's, he's participant. Yeah, yeah, he'll be a regular participant. So. The comic <laughs> musings <laughs> of our associate member. I look forward to reading the work. So I'll, I'll make a motion to appoint both of them. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Uh, vote to authorize the chair to sign the updated ADA coordinator appointment letter with new email address. Yeah, it's literally just housekeeping. I just realized that all of the forms for the ADA coordinator had the old email address so I figured I'd make sure it was correct enough to date. Well actually it's all four. I mean yeah all four of us to sign it. So, um, sorry, did you vote or just, I mean, I don't know if you need to vote. It's, it, <laughs> frankly, you're just, a, it's just a paper. Yeah. yeah. Is that all for new business? Okay. Items not anticipated 48 hours. Uh, town administrator update. Um, okay, so um, Jan Warner, um, her designation as a certified Massachusetts Municipal Treasurer Collector has been renewed for another five years. Renewal is awarded every five years to those who have been previously certified who attend the annual school of association and who successfully complete courses in municipal law, finance, and administration. So congratulations to Jan. That means she has to stay for her. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, and other time. I don't know if you noticed, but in there was sure. a recent town meeting, they were approving the thousand dollars as the um, sort of a payment for people who do get certified and use their treasure as well. So, um, just Wait. putting that plug in. In other words, you get you get a benefit for having done the certifications. So, so. is that required though? Every is, is that not the required? Sir, yeah. Uh, well, there, maybe this is the wrong one. I'm sorry, I'll have to check with Jan about that. So yeah, sorry. Um, and then on Tuesday, I don't know if we did if we did the meetings, but on Tuesday, uh, Phil and I met with George Stefan, um, who's Ashfield's E and B, Tommy Poison, who's their highway superintendent, Chris Margin and Mima. And we took a nice wander around the Ashfield Lake Dam and saw all the repairs that have been made. There have been some concerns in the past. There were trees growing up on the dam. There's a lot of vegetation. Um, the spillway and the um uh sorry what's the word again and the bridge um were all repaired um the dam itself the earthen dam itself they right that was all scoured out they replaced with more proper, yeah and, yeah 
and they've built it up. It looks beautiful to be honest with you. It's a, it's a nice little uh, way there now. Um, and while we were chatting, I was reminded of the 2020 Emergency Action Plan report that Ashfield has, which lists the contacts in case of a, in case of a potential dam breach or if things look like they're starting. And it lists, it shows, it has all these maps of where the water might go and what could be inundated. And then in Asheville, it lists all the businesses and homes that could be affected. It stops at our town border. And I would very much like to research who did that work for them, who funded it, and see if we can do the same for the time. So yeah, Tommy, Tommy poisons that chat. I think it was time by him. That's what he thought they wanted to double check. So, um, just because I think that would be nice to have on hand. And then, but, um, but that that was the one that had the flow chart of municipal contact. Correct. In, and that was and, and it was like dam breach. Talk to police chief, fire chief in Ashfield, then get permission from the select from, from the select board, yeah. then call Conway. Yeah. I was like, whoa. Um, we got it, you know, and they all said, oh, no, no, we're just going to ignore that and we're, we'll call you first. But it has to in writing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the plan does need to be updated, you know, fairly quickly. So I, I'm sure the next time, actually, I think it's supposed to be annually. So I'm sure the next time that they work on the update, because a number of the people of contacts, the people have changed anyway. So, you know. Um, but it was really, I must say, it was really nice to see the dean. <laughs> looking so nice. <laughs> um, then I also met with Sean um, from Northeast IT to discuss our upcoming cybersecurity assessment, which will be happening on, I'll put it here on the 16th, and I think it's actually the 15th. Um, so it basically, he will be spending the day out here with us. Roy is available that day. So yes, Thursday the 15th. Sorry, I was wrong. Was there a select board volunteer that? Step up. Uh, yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they will be, he, um, Sean will be coming in. He'll be running the scanning software on our computers and looking at everything and then drafting the report. And once that draft report is done, then thank you, Chris, for volunteering. We'll, we'll work with me and Sean to review it and see if we have any questions before Northeast presents the board and final report. Um, that is the same day we're leaving the channel. Okay, then I have something on here. No, we're meeting with her on Friday, the 16th. I thought you just said the 16th. The 16th. I did. I said it was wrong. I put it wrong in my report. Oh, oh got it, I got put it. the wrong date in the report. It's got to be the 15th for the cyber assessment. 15th, got right, it. Right, right. Yeah. And the last thing was that I did attend an ADA coordinator basics training just to stay up to date with what we need to know for. I don't know if you yeah, can great, since we just signed that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Select board member comments or concerns. Anybody? Okay. I would just say that I've uh, gotten a lot of comments about the town meeting upcoming uh number one why are we having it uh, everybody feels because like nothing on there seems like an emergency why are you guys doing this to us well i would certainly say that some of the items that we're discussing now then will shorten annual town meeting <laughs> yeah but there are certain things that like for instance the transfer station repairs, we have to know we have the money now, we need to start in the yeah. spring. So that's certainly not something that we could put off. So you know, we blame it on the transfer station. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, we, you know, the, the whole idea originally was to make this sort of a transfer station, tran trash up a loser kind of a town meeting, but didn't quite end up that way. And that's okay, it might be for the best, but, and to be honest, um, a lot of people had opinions about that too. And a lot of people agreed with like Erica's center of the road kind of philosophy of do this with more community input and more community meetings. And, um, you know, I did get like a, of the people that, that that talked about that one person was just upset because they wanted their chance to argue for keeping it just the way it is. One, one person was upset because they wanted their chance to argue for 
doing stickers right away and da da da. da. And um, but a couple people were like, you know what, doing it that way, just doing it with a lot more community input and having more meetings ahead of time, that makes sense. And I'm glad you're doing it that way. So, yeah. um, but uh, a lot, uh, like a lot of people voicing opposition to the chipper and the pickup truck. <laughs> So and, it'll still be a few meetings. And, um, yeah. you know, if, <laughs> if, if even half yourself. of them show, if, if half the people that have complained to me show up and complain at town meeting, those things are in trouble, like in terms of getting passed. Um, so, that, you know, I, I did, I did tell, I did, I did see Chief Baker and I said, uh, your things in trouble. You, you, you want, wear your flak jacket. Yeah, yeah. Wear your flak jacket, and you know, talk. You talk to some people that you know that are in favor of it, and try to get them there because things in trouble. Um, so anything that doesn't pass, it's special town meeting. I mean, there's nothing that prevents us from putting that on the annual town meeting. Correct. Course, correct. Correct. Right, so. And that's been done. If something's really important to the town. Um, it has showed up on the warrant year after year after year yeah, after so. year that the, the the highway facility is a perfect example. I think we went six years in a row with the funding past that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but and then it was then it was like once a decade for the four decades before that too. But uh, um, what else? The the mail, the farmland of local importance. So I did see that. The, there's a soil sign that a USDA soil scientist is trying is using this. Uh, basically, he wants he wants our uh, approval to designate certain properties in town farmlands of local import uh, of local importance, which will assist in getting a higher rate of pay if they ever do decide to preserve it in Chapter sixty one, whatever. Um, He's quite keen on it all. He's, he's been invited to come and explain it all to us on the 19th. And you can decide whether to sign up for it or not. Right. And the only thing that is required of the town is he would ahead of time present a list of the properties that he feels meet the criteria of the program. And literally the only thing the town has to do is sign to say, yes, you know, this is the list. And then he will go out and contact him. Yeah. yeah, I read that. It didn't seem like there was really any downside to the town to having, I mean, it's a benefit yeah. for local property owners if they do. The one thing he did say, you know, the caveat is it doesn't cost the town anything. He said, unless there's a farm out there that's not in Chapter 61 already, in which case the town could potentially lose a little bit of tax revenue. But yeah. the likelihood of that happening is no, that's huge. Huge. that's huge. That's huge. Our biggest agricultural properties are not in any program whatsoever. <laughs> that is an actual real, but not likely to join this either. But we hope that they would. That's the thing. <laughs> like we want them to, but we don't want to lose tax, but we want them to. Mm -hmm. um, there's a really neat website where I wasn't able to call up everything while I was on the phone with him, but I'm hoping that when he comes in on the 19th, he can show us, you know, if it's a soil map. I mean, the, this gentleman's been steeped in soils in Massachusetts for 40 years, so he knows our soil is, and we can put in, you know, areas and see what your soil types are. And I just thought that was a really neat database that I was not aware of. And one of the other things, you know, we talk a lot about carbon sequestration with the forest, but Soils are also a huge, huge um, way to sequester carbon. So they're very important as well. And that's, you know, not necessarily why they're doing this, but it's it no. definitely be better. I saw, I saw that that existed. And the first thing I thought was to try to correlate that with the observed fungi in the area <laughs> and see if we can use the soil map as a map to where the best <laughs> mushrooms are. <laughs> Uh, Bob Armstrong had a good article on, um, for anyone who's listening, had a good article on currents yeah. about the power rates, the electrical rates, and how you can protect yourself from getting too high of an increase next year. So, and whoever's watching, 
it's a good idea to read that article too. I just want to put that out there. Yeah, and uh, that was one of those things that I really didn't want to happen in town. I really thought that, yeah. um, which just goes to show, and, and that's a really good thing that, that has happened in town. And I was like wrong on that over across the course of several years. Um, but my objective to that was it was the privatizing public utilities and that we couldn't, you can, you can look up the profit that Eversource made last year, but you can't look up the profit that colonial power, right. which is like, uh, a mailbox of some guy yeah. that from Boston um, and that you couldn't find out what he was making off of Conway. And that just really bothered me. Um, and I was the only one that ever tried to get that information from them. They didn't really, they didn't like, you know, when you go into a meeting and someone just says, how much money do you make from us? You know, whatever, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> So, I understand it's, it's not really how you like win friends. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was definitely wrong on all that. And I, I, I've told Bob that many times. That this was a good thing. I'm glad he persevered and always got that second vote <laughs> that I never would give him. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. So the next, so. The next meeting actually is, well, Sat is Saturday the 10th. Lori was here, and I don't know if she wanted to speak to the appointment of the animal inspectors. Uh, uh, yes. Everything. Did you want to speak to that, Lori? Are you still there? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I am still here. Um, I didn't realize that. I forgot that that was on this agenda. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, <laughs> totally forgot. Um, basically, guys, we, we had to do a rush rush to get them appointed by DAR because we had 73 farms that needed to be inspected by the end of December. So we, ha we had like eight weeks to get these done. So we rushed it through DAR to get Emily and John appointed so they could get started before you guys actually did your appointment. So I, I saw, so um, who, who inspects Emily and John's farm? <laughs> the, <laughs> Emily is allowed to inspect John's barn because she does not live there and she does not make a profit off of that barn. Ah. So, so she is allowed to inspect John's barn independently. Okay. I always wondered. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but I mean, honestly, the two of them have been tag teaming these inspections together and doing a fabulous job. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, I, mean, I, I, I think yeah. I, I think Emily is completely amazing. I've known her for a long time. I love her to death. And uh, I'm, I totally support Any, anything we can get her to do. Do it. <laughs> like She's amazing. Yes, yeah, she is. Uh, she is. <laughs> but, you know, I apologize for pushing it past, but it, it just it we really needed to get somebody quickly to be able to start working legally. So. Yeah, it's a shame we couldn't get them to do the animal control officer too. I would have, I, I know, I know, I know Veronica's going to say, they, they say it's a bad idea, um, but hey, what's a bad idea? The, 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 the state doesn't like it when your animal inspection oh, person the is, yeah. is the same and whatever. But, well, I mean, Joe did both positions for, no. Joe and Leslie did him for years as a one person, no. but I think that the two of them have enough on their plates to not want to take on that added responsibility. I'm sure. But... So it would have been nice, but we're lucky to have them doing the inspections and the quarantine work. Yeah, you did, I mean, but so Lori, we did sign the, you know, a three year contract with the sheriff's department to do the ACO. Yep. And the only way that I, you know, I still, I still think that that's, you know, something that we should aspire to bring back into town as, as opposed to FERCOG or the I sheriffs. Agree. I agree. Um, and that the way to do that is when the, the inspection appointment is up to try to dovetail them together again, to make that more something that would somebody would say yes to. Um, well, their their appointments from the state run um, April years. to April. Yeah, they 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 run April to I think March thirtieth is 
So it's April. So that, April 30th of 20. April 30th. Okay. So they run May, they run, yeah, May 1st to April 30th is how they run. Oh, you have until April 30th to start working on them. <laughs> well, no, because we have a no. three year contract. Yeah, we, we had, I mean, we, we April 30th we spent... of 2025. <laughs> right, right. So, I mean, that's just, I don't think I'll. I don't think, uh, God willing, I won't be on <laughs> well, the chair of the select board at that point in it'll time. Be a minute, yes, yes. <laughs> that part. Yes, one of our one of our future designated leaders next to me is going to be running the show at that point, hopefully. Yay, um, Erica. <laughs> ah, yeah. I second that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was not my agenda. No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so our next meeting is actually Saturday, the 10th at 10 a.m. That's true. Yes. Um, which it should be always posted as a select board meeting as well. Um, it's actually on the website. <laughs> yes, I know. So, oh. Yes, yes. I'm sure. It's on the website, the secret website agenda. <laughs> <laughs> no, in the in the under select board, the next three meetings. Oh, okay. I, saw, okay cool. I, I was not. Able, I mean, I wasn't able to find the agenda for this meeting on the website. I I, I did see it somewhere. It must have been an email. You go like under to the select board. Yeah. And then you now. click on November fifth. I'm looking at. And then what? Just and then the calendar minutes from this meeting. Oh, see original. Oh, see original agenda. Yeah, because probably because Adam is in the middle. Oh, of the I'm in. Uh, oh, that's right now. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So, well, no, I no, I can't even see the agenda. Oh, it doesn't say see original. Well, agenda. it says see original agenda, but it's not. It's minutes from the last. Okay. Meeting. Interesting. Well, you know, this is the, what I know. We're figuring week, it out. I know. I, I, I did see it. I mean, I definitely saw it because I knew that Jeff was going to be here. Um, <laughs> this looked a little different to me when I saw it, but yeah. I can't find yeah. it now. So. so, but our our next meeting after the special town meeting is the night Monday the nineteenth uh, at six p.m. And we do have two special guests already. We have the soil, the USDA soil guy. Um, that's right at six o'clock, and we have tentatively scheduled our state representative Natalie Blaze at six thirty. Um, if we don't see her first in another tentative, perhaps tentatively scheduled okay. forest walk <laughs> with the commissioner, but um, we're, we're, we're quickly being frozen out of that whole thing too. I mean, I think they realize how far of a walk that is from where you park yeah. your car. So I just how also cold it is at the top of that. Mountain. I just wanted to point out too that in January. Um, the two meetings that we would have would both be on Tuesdays because January 2nd, which is the Monday, is the holiday. Mm -hmm. So Tuesday it would be Tuesday the 3rd. And then the same thing two weeks later with Martin Luther King Day. So yeah. it'd be actually two Tuesdays that would be January. And then um, hopefully after the 17th, we'd start meeting with you to discuss budgets. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, so other other so our, our next meeting, the 19th announcements. Um, there is a talk tomorrow by the geologist, the state geologist, former state geologist and UMass professor Richard Little on armored mud balls, <laughs> the main geographic fe geological feature. G yeah, yes, yes, the main geological feature of what of this area from yeah. the Jurassic upper area. Oh, Google armored mud balls. Armored mud balls. I have to say, okay. working at GCC a couple of years ago, well, several years ago, like we had, there was like a drive to like like adopt a mascot, and I was like, it should be the armored mud ball. Like <laughs> we have one. <laughs> and they sit in the same place for millions of years. You don't have to chase them down. Perfect students, really. Yeah, we, we did a survey, and I think like the duck. One or something. I was like, we don't even have ducks on campus. Yeah. But I'm so I'm I'm all in favor. I think he wants it to be the the he's he's he has a petition for the armored mud ball to be like the, the state, state yeah rock yes yeah this, yeah that, I think so I'm absolutely. all in favor because I was trying, I was just trying I think to make that might have that. already happened that might have already happened maybe actually. yeah 
No, Richard's great. This that's a, this that's at the Historical Society at 730. And uh, there we go. So, so there. Um, and aside from that, motion. Oh, and the Christmas Carol. Uh, Mike Haley's. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. What? Uh, is it the 16th? Friday. Yeah, Friday the 16th. And the 10th. What's the 10th Christmas? Mike Haley's staging everything. A, a Christmas carol at the yeah. fire. Yeah. House. No, isn't there a town Christmas party? What? Not this year? No, we're going to do something. In, the know, summer picnic February. was enough <laughs> trauma <laughs> that we could just. <laughs> Um, yes, so it's on Friday, December 16th at 7 p.m. at the Conway Firehouse. Seating is limited um, and available on a first come basis. Doors open at 6 30. Uh, $10 donations recommended. And all proceeds go to the Conway Fireman Scholarship Fund. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a nice production he puts on. I highly recommend it. It's, it's good. It's funny. Uh, all right, motion, <laughs> motion to adjourn until Saturday. Second. 10 a.m. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye